easy winners. Manager Eamon Cregan is not looking beyond Sunday, warning his players about being too complacent, pointing out that there was nothing at all certain about a berth in the semi-finals. Cregan adds that although Wexford were easily beaten in the Leinster final against Kilkenny, they were in a way the authors of their own downfall with some bad first half misses. If they have that failing corrected on Sunday, our lads will know that they're in a game. Despite being regarded as the underdogs, there is no shortage of confidence in the Wexford camp. The Wexford people's lead is the upbeat comment from selector Davy Morris who says, this is going to be our one. Morris confidently predicts, on Sunday we are going to achieve our goal and continue on our path to win this All-Ireland. And adds that despite being heavily beaten by Kilkenny, I have total confidence in the lads playing Limerick. However, writer David Williams shows some caution, saying Limerick were unlucky not to get at least a draw against Tipperary in the Munster final. Though Limerick's confidence is still high, following inspirational wins against Cork and Waterford, former Wexford captain Martin Storey says, one good performance and the model county could be readying themselves for another championship rematch, this time against Tipperary. Well, we await to see if all that's going to happen. The team's out on the pitch. Now, there has been a dinner Ella on the Wexford team, but Declan Ruth has been declared fit, and he does take his place at right wing back on the side. Final thoughts from the panel here in studio. Pete Finnerty, have Wexford got what it takes to topple Limerick? Who, it has to be said, did look impressive during their championship campaign on Munster. They did. Limerick have improved with every outing, and even in the Munster final, there was only a puck of a ball between themselves and Tipperary. The only problem that Limerick have playing in Crow Park is that a lot of the younger players wouldn't have played here already. Uh, Wexford are really playing at home here. Um, they've got a thrashing by Kilkenny, and knowing the pride that's in Wexford Hurling, they'll come out blazing with all guns. They've made a lot of changes. Uh, the team is younger now. It's a team for the future, uh, but still have a bit of experience there. Larry O'Gorman, Adrian, Adrian Finlan, and players like that that will find the way. I don't think that um, Wexford still have enough uh, done with the youth to be able to fill all the gaps that quickly. Limerick are more experienced, uh, they're stronger, they've had a tougher campaign and even though it'll be, they'll be there or thereabouts till 45 minutes or so, I think Limerick will pull away for a finish. All right, Pete, thank you very much for that. Let's go over to Croke Park then and pick up with our commentary on this second match from Joe Canning and Cyril Farrell. Where the temperature this afternoon is uh, reportedly 22 degrees. It's quite humid. A lot of people in their shirt sleeves here. Quite a few people still coming in and some of the latecomers trying to find their seats in the new Hogan stand here, which hasn't made it all that terribly easy for the many stewards trying to cope with the late rush here, following their comprehensive drubbing at the hands of the All-Ireland champion Skilkenny. The cornerbacks are now Rory Mallon and David O'Connor. Declan Ruth is past fit to play at right half alongside the experienced Liam Dunn and Larry O'Gorman. Nicky Lambert is chosen at midfield. Will he play there? Let's see. While Darren Stamp is alongside the equally youthful Trevor Kelly in the half-forward line. And Mitch Jordan has once again been moved, this time to right corner forward. He's been around full forward last year. Midfield in the Leinster final as well. And there is Mitch Jordan, who uh, today will be playing in the championship for the tenth time. Limerick are back, of course, first time in five years. And today Limerick make a couple of personnel changes and several significant switches from the team that narrowly lost to Tipperary. Clem Smith is switched to the left corner of defence. Demian Reel comes in at right half with Brian Geary now in the centre. James Moran lines up alongside Kieran Carey in midfield. Mike O'Brien is repositioned at left half forward while the inside line remains unaltered. It's James Butler, Brian Begley and Barry Foley. Foley, of course, is the captain. And uh, I can tell you that Wexford have won the toss and they're going to play from left to right in the first half. That's our understanding. A match which will be handled, of course, here by a Waterford official, and that is Michael Wadding. Big day for him. Huge roar. Great sense of anticipation. already yeah and uh, Trevor Kelly has gone into midfield he's the number 11 number five here of course is Damien real came on 
to great effect in the Munster final. That's one back there by Rory Mallon. Nice ball forward, Rory McCarthy here, one of the players they're going to look to, one of the more experienced players at this stage. Taken back by Mark Fowler, what a great left half back he is. Ruth, good catch. Up to Larry Murphy, playing on the 40, as anticipated. Taking on Brian Geary. Runs all the way through to Timmy Hulahan. And Limerick's collection of under-31s. Kieran Carey today picked, of course, in midfield. Fenland was lashing it forward, it's Larry Murphy angling this one across here towards Mitch Jordan starting here on the left hand side against Steve McDonough dangerous ball in there with a goal it's Rory McCarthy it's a fantastic goal you're out of the sky you whiz back of the net you won't see a better one than that and it's the perfect start for Wexford because they needed that after the last day only a minute gone Mitch Jordan popping up on the left hand side and what about this for an absolutely brilliant finish there was nothing that Timmy Oulihan could do to deny Rory McCarthy. Lovely wrist work, great decisiveness, and a smashing goal. It's as good a goal as we've seen in the championship. Here comes Ollie Moran. They're expecting big things from Ollie, but this one has gone wide. He had been one of their best forwards this year in the championship, but surprisingly in the Tipperary match, Munster final, he only got one point, yeah, Jerry, same as Begley. He had a quiet game that day, Jerry. He had two very good games before that, and they'll be looking for him today. Liam Dunn is a hardy man to be on him. They'll want him to break the ball through. That's a bad miss for Limerick, because it's a perfect start for Wexford. The crowd are on their feet already. You could, you're going to have a great game. Wexford playing against a slight breeze in this first half. That was a really devastating finish by Rory McCarthy. I think the point has been made, and I was just emphasising it as well, that players like Larry O'Gordon, Liam Dunn, Adrian Fenlon, and Rory McCarthy, these are the fellows who've got the experience now, and they've got to try and bring the younger players through. That's a bit of a pile-up. Darrell Ryan was coming across there, so too was Liam Dunn, and it's Limerick who will get the free. In all probability, Derry George was actually Darrell Ryan that said that foul. Liam Dunn got the ball. Darrell Ryan pushed the Limerick lad out of the way. So it's a, it's a soft free for Limerick as such. But it's an important one. And it'll be Mike O'Brien who will step up to take it. Perhaps it's Paul O'Grady, in fact. They're leaving it to Paul O'Grady to try to strike this one in. 17 points in four championship matches. Maximum concentration. And he's put it wide. It's another bad miss. Not a good start by Limerick, but early stages. Yes, yeah, two wides now, Duran. They don't need that, you know. Like usually they fall is very accurate. That's a bad, bad, bad wide. And it lets Limerick off to or it lets Wexford off the hoop. They're off the hoop, but Wexford are off the mark. Damien Fitzhenry, huge puck out beyond Kieran Carey. Down towards Larry Murphy. Great catch. Striking it, is it dropping short? It is. Opportunity still, however. Timmy Hulham getting out there. Three Wexford players surrounding him. Mitch Jordan is trying to take it away from him. So too is Paul Codd. And the keeper has it again. And it's going to be a free in. Yeah, they're over carrying the such, and it could have gone either way there, but like that ball should have been cleared. And like this should put Wexford four points up. It's the perfect start, and Paul Codd will come across to hit this one. Very experienced player. So far, he has scored 54 points in his career with Wexford. Nicky Lambert waiting inside there. He's been marked by TJ Ryan. Remember, he was picked in midfield, but he plays at full forward. Paul Cott striking for Wexford and striking it accurately. His first three, his first point. And it's a dream start by the Slaney Siders, who lead by 1-1 to no score. Nicky Lambert is a big man in there, Jerry, and he's trying to upset, uh, trying to upset TJ Ryan as such. As he stands over six feet tall. Kieran Carey, benefiting from this puck out, well directed to him. Dropped down there by the fullback Darrell Ryan. Supported here, however, by Liam Dunn. Didn't strike it all that well. Mark Foley. Dan Stamp is around there as well, trying to drag it forward somehow. Comes back instead, however, to Clem Smith. 
The other man on the left wing, Mark Foley, crossing sides. There's James Moran. Good start once again here by Damien Fitzhenry. Great clearance. Great lively start to this. Excellent hurling. Clem Smith whipping it back into the centre. Adrian Fenland there, benefiting from that slack pass. Driving it high, driving it well, and driving it over the bar. Great score, Joe. He needed that after the last day because straight from midfield. He had a poor game for his own standards last day. It was a brilliant score. Just worth watching this one again here. Adrian Fenland from the Rapparees Club. Just getting the distance. Again, Limerick trying to profit by a little bit of pushing there. Holly Moore was in the thick of the action, and Limerick have themselves a free. Now they're looking for their first score, and once again, it's Paul O'Grady who will take it. Paul O'Grady from Patrick's Well. He was on the 1998 intermediate um, winning team. O'Grady. 45 metres out. This is struck well. With great accuracy, Limerick at their first point. Still very early stages of the match. Indications of a good of a rip-roaring contest. Fenlin with that excellent point just moments ago there. Damien Fitzhenry. They knock it away out of danger. Damien Reel into the centre. Back in by Liam Dunn. Up into the corner. This is Mark Foley. Excellent delivery. Trying to get it down towards his namesake, Barry. Instead, it's Fendlin for Wexford. Badly beaten in the Leinster final. But up against a really good team as Teeth. Jay Ryan was fouled, having come out with the ball that time. And it just heats up for a moment. Yeah, he played well there, Jerry. He got out first to that ball, and that's the way, to, uh, that's the way he'd have to play because. Lambert is very big as such. Very important score for Limerick just to keep them in the game. PJ Ryan here, of course, started out as a forward where he scored two goals and 21 points. And now a very good fullback. Great ball in. Opportunities for Limerick presented. They still try to work it in, but the defence standing firm there. Begley trying to get it back across. Limerick looking for another score, but instead it is... Declan Ruth who gets it away from Wexford, up towards Rory McCarthy. Here comes Trevor Kelly. One of the five under-21s. Nicky Lambert loses his stick, it was dragged back from him, and uh, it ends up being a Wexford free. Nicky Lambert who plays for Faith Harriers. Sun in the eyes of some of the fans across on that far side there. And the free has been advanced 13 metres because Limerick did not retreat fast enough. Here's Paul Codd once more. Same result. So far, Ger, Nicky Lambert is doing very well in there on TJ Ryan because he's, he's upset them and TJ has fouled them and they're all scores. Well, if this man gets the opportunities from 45 metres out, even a little more than that, he can be deadly accurate. All going very nicely for the Leinster runners up so far. That's once again Darren Stamp. Up into the corner, Mitch Jordan. Jordan steadying himself, and he places it beautifully. What a terrific start for Tony Dempsey's team. Well, that is yet another one for Wexford. 1-4 to a point. Every one of their attacks now at this stage, it seems, is yielding something, and they're all able to strike. They've found their form. I think they've been playing for pride as well, because since that bad defeat, of course, they've done well at on 21 and intermediate level in Leinster. Rory McCarthy switching it across. Darren Stamp. Players ahead of him. Inside towards Nicky Lambert. Let's it run over his head this time. Timmy Ullman coming out for, for Limerick. Here's Clem Smith. Six points behind, but very early stages. 
Touched out here by David O'Connor. Once again, that's a lovely drop down. That was Larry O'Gorman that time. As Ollie Moore was trying to fire it in. Instead, it's James Moore and his brother, and he gets it over the bar. James is back. Missed the match against Tipperary with injury. It's a new Limerick midfield pairing. And they're settling to their task. And it's 1-4 to 2 points. This was a great point. There was a good block just moments earlier by Larry O'Gorman. Good follow-up play. James Moran again in there, but this time he leaves it behind. And it is Trevor Kelly. Bit of a pile-up. The referee's going to throw that ball in. A match of great intensity. And the big crowd enjoying it. Larry Murphy was in there. Comes across once again towards Darren Stamp, having a shot himself, going for it, he likes it. A drop short, however. Timmy Houlihan. Missed by Kelly, not by Larry O'Gorman. The tearaway wing back, inside towards Rory McCarthy. Hands and knees job. Limerick group and well. Here's Clem Smith. Clem getting it away. Nice ball out here as far as James Moran. Whipping it in. Barry Ford is chasing after it, but uh, all in vain. And I think Damien Fitzhenry had it in any case. Yeah, Gerard, there's great old tempo to the game, though. It's up and down the, uh, the, the pitch. Well, this is what the fans have come from. An exciting afternoon of really good quality hurling. Fitzhenry's puck out. Down towards Larry Murphy once again, and again Larry gets it. On his left-hand side. Saved by the goalkeeper. Hulahan is very cool. Out to Steve McDonough. Didn't like the heat in Porky Queef in the Munster final. Went off that day. There's O'Gorman. He pushes. And it's a free downfield for Limerick. Yeah, Jerry charged, he charged that ball, made a great catch, but he's charged right into Paul O'Grady. This is a chance for O'Grady to put another fine draw for Limerick. So once more, Paul O'Grady. Well, this is just inside the 65 metre line. Breeze is behind him, blowing over his right shoulder. Big distance out. He's got one already, however. He took his time over it. He might have taken another little bit because he's put it badly wide. Four wides now for Limerick. Two points on the scoreboard. Damien Fitzhenry here playing in his 25th championship match in the Wexford Colours. Rory McCarthy going to meet it, but it comes back instead to Paul O'Grady. O'Grady sending it in there. Barry Foley. It's a great goal for Limerick. And Barry Foley, the captain, has got it. And makes it 1 4 to 1 2. Fantastic score, Joe. A great run by Paul O'Grady. But why did he stick that? We've seen two fantastic goals here today. This was worth seeing. This was a great run. Soloing through, laying it off beautifully to Barry Foley, who buried it. For a moment, you thought Paul O'Grady was. Uh, Heading into no man's land, but when Wexford had defenders sucked towards the man coming through, there was a player loose, that player was Barry Foley, and he is a most impressive finisher. It's his fourth goal in championship hurling. We've got some game here now, Joe. You have everything in it. Goals, points, and the tempo is rising the whole time. It's Paul O'Grady who's gone down injured. Yeah, Joe, he got a great tackle coming through after Parton with the ball. He's just winded. He'll be all right. Well, Dr. Dave Boylan has done his job well, and O'Grady is back in the action. He's going very, very deep, incidentally, almost into midfield. A big point to prove, especially players like Kieran Carey, who lost the 1996 All-Ireland Final. He's down injured just momentarily. Here's Glenn Geary. Here he has switched from left corner back to the centre of the half-back line. And Mark Foley trying to get away from Darren Stamp. All gets a bit tense. 
And they're still shaping up to one another. Paul Cobb there and Clem Smith. Michael Wadding, referee from Waterford. Hoping that common sense will be prevailed upon. Be taking this one. Striking it down towards Ali Moore. And batted out over by Liam Dunn. Great centre-back play. Here's Darren Stamp. Stamp's been in a lot of the action so far. That's Paul Cobb. Clem Smith gets out of the ball. And in the end, they leave it to TJ Ryan to fire it way, way downfield, down towards Brian Begley. Pressure in there on Rory Mallon. They try to work it out. Declan Ruth having a swing at it there. It didn't make any great contact, but sufficient contact to give Limerick the sideline ball. It's a tough, hard physical battle, Jaron. There's no quarter being given or taken as such. We've had some very good quarter-final matches. You all remember, I'm sure, the Kilkenny Galway match a few years ago down in Thurles. Tony Dempsey just standing right behind the man who's about to hit this one, James Moran, urging on the Wexford players to defend valiantly. Pressure on the backs. It was almost coming out there to Trevor Kelly. Oh, it's left behind by Darrow Ryan. Trying to get it out second time of asking. Stout defending. James Butler beaten for it. Driven away out of defence by Rory McCarthy. Here comes Brian Geary. Needing the assistance there of Damien Real. Out to Kieran Carey, he'd love to score here. The man who was invited back into the party by Eamon Cregan. This time he misses. People, I think, enjoying the start of this match. Very competitive. Anybody's game. Yeah, Joe, we needed this after the other game because the Galway Derry game where you could go to sleep watching it. Bittenry. Down once again into the half-forward line. This time it's knocked out by Michael Bryan. To Larry O'Gorman, partly blocked. Missed by O'Grady. Geary's there as well, the number six for Limerick. That's O'Grady, challenged by Larry Murphy. Finally just get it out towards Kieran Carey. Michael Wadding pointing the way almost. Steve McDonough down towards Brian Begley. Great full forward play. He's dragged, he's pulled by Darrow Ryan. And the Wexford captain conceding the free to the big man. Yeah, Jaron, that could be a yellow card. You'd want to be careful because if you get one or two of them, give away them soft and count up in the end. Well, the referee's calling him to one side. I think it is going to be a yellow card. First of the match. And that is Darrow Ryan who's got that card. So it brings Paul O'Grady down once again towards the free area. One so far out of three converted by the Limerick number 10. And the area of the free in this case is about 35 metres out. Again, he takes maximum care. The referee is checking on his watch, making sure there isn't uh, delaying going on here. This to put just a point between the teams. Uh, Wexford fans, I think, th think he's taking far too long over it. But it's worked for him, and he's put it over the bar. So a second point for Paul O'Grady, and one point between them. Yeah, Ger from a disastrous start, Limerick have clawed their way back into the game. And we've seen two wonderful goals. Wexford trying to win their own puck out here. Mark Foley is under it, doesn't take it, however. Instead, it is Brian Geary. Broken down here by James Butler. Left for Ali Moran. Great solo run. How will he finish with it? Two Wexford men are after him. He was hooked. And the attack breaks down. Paul O'Grady going to start once again. Brian Begley's shot flashes over the bar. And the teams are level. Begley's first score. All of it followed, of course, a great run by Ali Moran. A hook, but not a particularly good clearance by the Wexford backs. 
O'Grady feeding Begley and he fired it over off his left hand side he's a huge player 6-5 I think Brian Geary Rory McCarthy jinking his way forward and he looks at the referee but the referee said it was a complete accident there wasn't a trip that's in the referee's view here's Trevor Kelly Wexford needing a score or two now having allowed Limerick make a full recovery Carry out to McDonough two of the old heads Begley trying to bat it inside here Mark Foley or rather Barry Foley and Barry Foley's shot has gone wide he's protesting some of the fans are protesting as well but the umpire was in no doubt at the moment Joe, there's very little ball passing the Limerick half back they never took out the Limerick half back and the midfielder muffled up very little going through to the, to the Wexford full forward line the Wexford's last score was of the 10th minute so for the last 11 minutes they have failed to get a shot yeah, in really not to go through Joe. you have to start winning these puck outs once again it's Kieran Carey he's dropped it Fenlon applies pressure they wait for Geary to come on it's fouled by Larry Murphy the match has turned it's now going Limerick's way but a long way to go yet only midway through this first half on a steaming hot afternoon not as uh, hot or as humid as it was down in Cork for the uh, Munster hurling final Here's Mark Foley from Adair. And that is going towards the left-hand side. Kept in play. Here comes David O'Connor. Big man playing at cornerback. And Limerick will have the possession once again. A couple of Limerick players having a discussion as to who might take the cut. And James Boren fancying his chances. I'm sure everybody in Limerick remembers the marvellous sideline cut taken by Barry Foley in the match against Cork. A real winner right at the end. Moran's cut inside here. Taken by the cornerback there, David O'Connor. Darren Stamp breaking it down, but only as far as Mark Foley. Has Geary in assistance. 65 metres out, firing it, but firing it away to the left-hand side and wasted possession. That's seven wides now by Limerick. It's a big number when you consider that we've only played 23 minutes. At the moment as well now, Ger, Trevor Kelly has gone back wing back instead of Larry Gorman. Larry's gone midfield. It's O'Gorman and it is Fenland in midfield. Great catch. Here's O'Gorman linking up with Rory McCarthy. Should be a point here, but it isn't. It's a bad miss. There was nobody really on him that time. It was a great ball by Larry O'Gorman. That should have been a score to have settled Wexford. They're going through a bad patch. Well, the team's still level here. Liam Dunn rising up for it. And I think he's made contact with Ollie Moran's hand. And Ollie has gone down injured. And the referee said to the nearly pull. Or still in need of some attention. The referee telling all the other Wexford players out of the way. I want to have a word with your number six, Liam Dunn from Alert de Bach. And it's going to be another yellow card. So that's two yellow cards for players in central areas in the Wexford defence. Darrow Ryan and now Liam Dunn. There he was, pulling and making contact with Oli Moran. So the referee deciding it was a dangerous pull, and it leaves Paul O'Grady to come up and strike this one, and possibly put Limerick in front. Again, he's taking an inordinate, an inordinate amount of time over the freeze. He's put it wide. They're very, very bad misses, Ger, because like the top free taker should be scoring them. He's taking a lot of time in it, and he's entitled to take as much time as like if he scores and such. But like he's putting pressure on himself. He's missed two or three vital ones. Limerick should be now leading. Well, he hit five frees 
in the Munster final at Porky Cueve. Only two converted so far out of five, however. Kieran Carey contesting here with Adrian Fenlon. Brian Geary appreciating the dangers. Declan Ruth stepping in, challenged by Kieran Carey. Nobody able to make any great deal of headway, and it ends up being a free to Limerick. Disappointment there for Darren Stamp. David O'Connor here has moved across, and he's, as you can see, picking up Barry Foley. It's Mark Foley to take this. Dropping it in, intended for Ali Moran, but instead it's O'Connor. Darren Stamp under the dropping ball, doesn't make contact. And that was Cobb. And Mark Foley looks at the referee and says, well, was that a fair shoulder to shoulder? He didn't believe it was. And that has gone wide. The effort was by Paul Codd. Well, it has to be shoulder to shoulder. And there you can see it wasn't. Moran waiting for it, so too is Kieran Carey. Adrian Fenland going back, delivering this pass up to Paul Cobb. Good catch this time, getting away from Clem Smith. In support is Larry Murphy. Wexford looking for something. Will they get something here? They may well do. And it's fired over the bar. And Nicky Lambert has got his first point. And Wexford lead once again. Good play here involving Cod, involving Larry Murphy, and in the end, involving Nicky Lambert. Hulahan's puck out, very this time, towards the right-hand side to Mike O'Brien. Having the presence of mind to pick out Paul O'Grady, though he was on the ground. O'Grady's shot has gone wide once again. Far, far too many misses. That is now nine wides for Limerick. And Tony Dempsey's team still just edging it. Eamon will not be pleased at all. Does that happen for Paul O'Grady? But if he's left on, he could turn out to be the hero. Usually they'll come right and keep at them. Touched out here towards the dashing man in the middle of the field, Kieran Carey. That support ahead of him loses his stick. And it's running away there from James Moran. And in the end, good clearance. Trevor Kelly with the clearance. Up it comes to Mitch Jordan. And he's put it over the bar. Michael known as Mitch Jordan from Marshallstown. Contributing a second point as Wexford lead by 1-6 to 1-4. Very good individual play, a direct run through, and a fine finish. Smart hurling. He's had just two shots at the target as well, so he's doing particularly well. This is stopped by Trevor Kelly. Up towards Mitch Jordan once more. Steve McDonough having his hands full. Good ground hurling. It was intended for James Moran. Run back by Declan Ruth. Knocked out this time by Rory Mallon. There's Paul O'Grady. Saved well. Good play by Damien Fitzhenry. To a point there, he's in trouble. Limerick advancing. It's a goal. And it's a second goal for Barry Foley. A bad error. Should have been cleared. 29 minutes gone. And Barry Foley has got two goals in this match. It's actually the first time, Joe, that, that uh, Limerick have gone in front. Ball coming from Paul O'Grady, just well hooked here. Well, he was in real trouble, and Barry Foley applied the finish there. But it was a very smart piece of hooking. Spigley did all the donkey work. Doing the donkey work right now is Liam Dunn. Back in by Damien Real. So Limerick lead just a point in it that's out by Darrow Ryan 
a catch. Larry O'Gorman has caught some good ball. Here comes Larry Murphy. Geary is in pursuit. It's still Murphy going through like a train. Lambert was trying to benefit at the end. He's taken down, and the referee is going to uh, award a free, and I think it's going to be a penalty. And there are plenty of stuff happening in the square now. This Lambert has really thrown his way around. There's Lambert using his fist as well there, making contact with Mark Foley. This was the run in here by Larry Murphy into the rectangle. And he was fouled, and the referee was in no doubt. TJ Ryan, being spoken to by the referee, wants to call him across. He's already booked two Wexford players, full-back and the centre-half back. Protesting vigorously, but nonetheless, it's a yellow card. Jerry, you're going to see here as well, Damien Fitzhenry is coming up. If he's coming up, he's only going for one thing. He'll try to bury this ball on the back of the net. He has a very hard shot. And try and rid himself of the memory of the goal that was conceded just a few minutes ago. Loads of drama. Fitzhenry, with about four minutes to go to half-time, plus perhaps a little bit of stoppage time. They try to put him off. A lot of booing and cheering from the Limerick fans. Fitzhenry striking and scoring! It's not that easy for the mark, Jerry. He's a great hurler and he's, he feels redeemed after the last one. He's going to run 100 metres as fast as ever as he can. We have everything in this game. Absolutely. Four goals so far. It's 2-6 to 2-4. There's nothing they could do, he simply drove it mercilessly in. And there's another score, and it's Oli Moran who's put it over the bar for Limerick. So there's only one between them. What a first half, rip roaring, really exciting. Anybody's match, top quality contest, Damien Fitzhenry. Trying to pick out Rory McCarthy this time, and that will be a line ball. Went off the Wexford man stick. Put the attention on the sideline. And Eamon Cregan pacing up and down. How he'd love to bring his side through the remaining stages of this All Ireland Championship. Remember, he was boss of Offaly when they beat Limerick. He'd love to manage Limerick to an All Ireland success. Pressure coming from Wexford right now. Larry Murphy getting it in towards Paul Codd. Clem Smith's alongside him. They work it out as far as Mark Foley. Great clearance downfield. Brian Begley, Darrow Ryan rising for it, and it's a fullback who takes it. Darrow Ryan. Larry Murphy beaten for it there by Brian Geary. Just edging it out. Darren Stamp can't hold it. Instead, it's Kieran Carey. Switching it across beyond the head of Paul O'Grady. Instead, Trevor Kelly with the clearance for Wexford. Intended for Nicky Lambert. Out comes TJ Ryan. A thundering clearance. We believe there'll be about three extra minutes to be added on. So still a lot of hurling to be played, even before we reach half-time. Brian Begley, one point so far in this match. Plays from Mungret, of course. Used to play a lot of football as well, but I think Eamon Cregan more or less put it to him. You concentrate on one game, and he chose Hurley. James Moran driving it in. Darrow Ryan once again. Having a great battle there with Brian Begley. Referee says, come on, play on. James Butler trying to get it in. All stalemated, the referee's going to throw it in. So it's going to be between Rory Mallon and James Butler. It runs out beautifully. Rory McCarthy just overhitting that slightly. Larry O'Gorman on the ground didn't make great contact. Mark Foley instead covering every little space around the half-back line. He was being pushed back, dragged back, fouled, and it's going to be a free for Limerick. You'd have to say, George, since Larry O'Gorman went midfield, like he has to up midfield as such like, and they are getting to get a bit more ball up. TJ will go for a long one here. 
Limerick with 18 scoring chances so far. 14 scoring chances for Wexford. TJ Ryan towards Begley. Sun in his eyes. Runs on to Foley. Oof. That's just gone wide. He's on a hat-trick at this stage. Looking for his third goal. But he'd have settled for a point there. Now, two great goals, Jerry. He's missed a few points. And he's coming across onto his good side. Usually he wouldn't miss them. So Damien Fitzhenry has had... Uh, a checkered first 35 minutes here, having scored a goal from a penalty, having conceded two. One where he was trying to make a clearance. Larry O'Gorman inside, Lambert's there, Timmy Lillian's there, and it's a combo coming on to him. Oh, it seemed it had to go in. How did that stay out? Mitch Jordan with the last effort, and they're going to pile up of bodies in front of uh, the goal of Timmy Hulahan, and it gets out of hand. And the referee there bringing Nicky Lambert to side. Jerry, it's happened a lot in Hurling lately. The match we've been at where the person in, on the ball lies at it and kills it. That's technically speaking a free or foul on the ball. Mm -hmm. But all the referees are given throws in. Let's watch this here again. Great save. But Timmy Hulling comes back out here. Yes, he was lying on it. Clem Smith was contesting that one there with Larry Murphy. And the referee has made his intentions plain. Free in. Larry put over his leg and, leg and Tim uh, Clem whipped it. Hit his leg so it's going to be over the bar. So a great chance for Wexford then to go two points ahead. Paul Codd has taken just two frees so far. He's converted both. He's going for a goal! Right on the call of half time. Oh, God. 37 minutes gone from the free. We were expecting he'd tap it over the bar. He had other ideas, and it's his first ever goal in championship hurling. And this is how it came. Close to half time, deceiving the Limerick defence. Psychologically, Jerry, it's a great one. They started the half well. They are finishing it well. Limerick to try and get something back, but they're stopped once more, and it's Larry O'Gorman hoping he'll be there playing, not at just in an, a, a Lord Ireland semi-final, but perhaps the final as well. Ken Smith and Darren Stamp getting to know one another fairly well. Well, if the referee indicated that there were three minutes to play, we're coming close to the end of that now. Need a score before half time just to get them back on track again. They're behind by a goal and a point. Bagley, up the goals again. Towering figure. And that is struck by Mike O'Brien, and inexplicably he's put it wide. Just for a moment, the defence seemed to freeze. Gave him the opportunity. It's as if there's someone behind the goals blowing a whistle. I think they all pulled up. 11 wide by Limerick in the first half. Can't be too much time left now. And that is it. It's been a terrific first half, which we hope you've enjoyed. Michael Wadding has been busy. Rory McCarthy got a goal after just a minute. A wonderful shot. We had a penalty goal by Damien Fitzhenry. We had a, a, a goal from a free by Paul Codd. And two for Limerick by Barry Foley. 13 minutes and 29 minutes. And here at half-time, this is the situation. Wexford, 3-4. Limerick, 2-5. Wexford lead by four points. Well, what a second half we could be in for now. Let's go down to Dara Maloney. Martin Story, I'm sure all of Wexford happy with that first half performance. Absolutely thrilled with it, I mean, because that's what was lacking in the second half against Kilkenny. We does the Wexford now that we're used to it in Wexford with the passion, the pride and the, the honour in the jersey, and I mean, Wexford fought for every ball out there, and we've a four-point lead, and hopefully we'll, we'll defend it in the second half, you know, and keep going on from it. Limerick had a good spell, but you, you weathered it well. The goal at the end, very important. Did you? I mean, I mean, Wexford didn't score for about 12 minutes, and Limerick got back in and got back level, and he scored a goal and three points to level it up. But in fairness to Wexford, they fought for every ball in the backs, and, I mean, eventually they weathered the storm, and Limerick were after hitting 13 wides in that first half, like, you know, so Wexford of about five or six, I'd say. So I'm very happy with the performance. Going well. Well done, Martin. Thank you. Thanks.
It certainly is going well from a Wexford point of view in front of 36,850. There'll be championship glory in 2001. Back to Croke Park. Yes, and there are changes. I will tell you about them in just a moment. They're made by Limerick. Wexford unchanged from the way they finished that first half. Well, the two men who were in are Owen O'Neill and Sean O'Connor. Sean O'Connor, who was, I thought, very surprisingly omitted. He's gone into left half forward. And uh, let's just see, O'Neill is playing right corner forward in place of James Butler. For two early changes, James Moran has got off, James Butler has got off. Certainly Eamon Cregan, I think, indicating his displeasure with the opening 35 minutes. So changes in the attack. Larry Murphy attacking for Wexford towards Mitch Jordan. McDonough has lost his stick, but he's still chasing after the Wexford man. Larry Murphy firing it in, stopped by Timmy Houlihan. Here come Wexford once again. Stopped over there was Paul Codd, he fouls, and it's a free out for Limerick. Remember a light breeze around today, almost diagonal at this stage, just about supporting Wexford. This is Mark Foley, free taker. Towards Brian Begley. Darrell Ryan breaks it down. Sean O'Connor coming in on goal. Got a goal and three points against Tipperary. It was the leading score for Limerick, and they left him out for this match from the start at least. But it's now very much a 20-man game, and there's a free in. Vital free now for Paul O'Grady. He needs to score this if he's going to take it, because he's missed about three or four in the first half. It's unbelievable to think that Wexford had only two wides in the first half, and Limerick had 11. It's very telling statistics. O'Connor with that good run. Paul O'Grady. Two points from Freeze in the first half, but he had a lot of chances. This time the delay is caused because there's an injury to one of the Wexford players. Well, the doctor called in to attend Stephen Bow seems to be uh, Declan Ruth just checking during the halftime break incidentally from my records here Damien Fitzhenry's penalty goal there I think that's his sixth ever goal in the championship which is a stunning record for a goalkeeper Ruth is back on his feet once again O'Grady's about to strike this one one he needs for his confidence and Limerick need to edge closer he's got it a third point for Paul O'Grady and it's now 3-6 to 2-6 Declan Ruth uh, he is going off the Wexford team. Clearly that injury means he's not fit enough to continue. And just for the moment, it seems that Wexford are down to 14 men. They're attacking with Larry Murphy. And he's put it wide. Bad miss. He had enough time. Well, Declan Ruth went into the match, of course, with something of an injury. And into the game now comes Ken Furlong from St. Martins. Harry Murphy for all his attacking, no scores so far out of five shots. Missing far too many. Back comes Adrian Fenlon. Trying to tidy up at the back there is TJ Ryan. Slack hand pass, seized on by Paul Codd. Slightly off balance as he strikes this one, and he's put it wide. Well, he surprised everybody with that goal after 37 minutes. Eamon Cregan has made two changes. Wexford forced to make one. Rossi Carroll there, part of the management team. Along with Canon Willie Fitzmaurice and uh, Michael Fitzgerald. Plus Joe Grimes, of course. Well taken here by Ali Moran. They're looking for a big showing from Ali for the second half. 
bad pass however. Mike O'Brien, the one who couldn't hold on to it. And it's Rory McCarthy getting it away downfield. It sails over the head there of Nicky Lambert. Timmy Houlihan, who last year played at minor under 21 and senior. Phenomenal record. Here comes Brian Begley once again. Dara Ryan just trying to keep him out, away from the danger area, not giving him an easy shot in. Well cleared by David O'Connor of Wexford. Brilliantly caught by Damien Real. Real and the solo. Getting away from Rory McCarthy. Firing it in. The umpires look at it. The flags go up and it's over the bar. Great score, Joe. Played under 21 last year. Came on in the Munster final cornerback and had a brilliant game. Great score this indeed by Damien Real. Pinpoint accuracy. So just about six minutes into the second half now. Little to choose between the teams. Geary goes highest for that, but drops it down on the as far as Darren Stamp. And Stamp has missed another one. They're bad misses during all Darren Stamp and Larry Murphy have missed two easy scores for Wexford to put them in the driving seat again if they got them. Yeah, they might have had only had two wides in the first half, but they now have five. And it's early stages. Hulahan's puck out. Broken down there by Ollie Moran. One here by Adrian Fenlon. Good run forward by Fenlon. Two men were after him. Dropping it in there. Nicky Lambert. Trying to put a ball into the path there of Rory McCarthy, but overhitting it. And in steps Brian Geary. Trying to get the ball away, but they're all after him. Mitch Jordan. Trying to restore some order. The hand pass into space, but really a poor discharged hand pass and Paul Grady. Challenged by Larry Murphy, supported here by Stephen McDonough. Very close to that side line, and the umpire no more than a couple of feet away. Or the, the linesman, rather, no more than a couple of feet away. And the referee is going to throw the ball in. He's had to do that quite a lot in this match. Yeah, Jarrah is becoming a feature of our games. All the games are mostly the same thing. Referee pushing the two players back. Mike O'Brien missing it, so too Larry O'Gorman. Taken forward by Paul O'Grady. Nephew of Michael and PJ O'Grady, of course. Great hurling family. Uh, we think that Jack Foley may be the one that Limerick are considering bringing in as their next substitution. It could be for Mike O'Brien. Jimmy Hartigan there having given the little slip of paper to the fourth official. So Mike O'Brien is off. So from the team that started now, Limerick have made three changes at half-time. We told you that James Moran and James Butler went off. And now it's Mike O'Brien's turn. Sympathetic applause for his efforts. Mark Foley has come across to take this free for Limerick. They're having a good look at it, but it's gone to the left. He's very much their long-range free taker. Mark Foley, by the way, at this stage is uh, following Rory McCarthy everywhere. McCarthy getting away from him, however. And Clem Smith was asked to take over the duties. Brian Geary stopped by Darren Stamp. Fire downfield. Runs in there towards Brian Begley. Great snatch. Excellent steal by Darryl Ryan. Having a great match at fullback for Wexford. Certainly Wexford have restored a lot of their pride following their huge defeat at the hands of Kilkenny. Still a long way to go, however. Winning this one back here is Jack Foley. The man is just into the action. Broken down by Barry Foley. The Foley's, of course, it's Adair's Mark Foley, and then you've got Jack from Adair as well, they're brothers. That's out by McDonough. Larry O'Gorman. Powerless to deny Kieran Carey. Dropping it in towards Brian Begley. Foley anticipating. It's Barry Foley trying to come in. 
But once again, it's the fullback, Darrell Ryan. And he has stepped out over the end line, and it's a 65. Just the first 65 of this match. And we've seen a very, very good performance by Darrell Ryan, but this was the steal here. Great work. You'll probably find here, Joe, that Paul O'Grady will take the 65 and try to get him back himself into the game by putting it over the bar. Right now in midfield, it's Jack Foley, by the way, and Kieran Carey, that's the partnership. Meanwhile, Wexford are also preparing a player, that's Gary Laffin there, big full forward. Him and Gregan there having some discussions with uh, his panel of selectors. Only two more substitutions can be made by Limerick. O'Grady with the 65. Three-pointed free so far. Kieran Carey was making a run out of picture. And that's over. Yeah, Joe, he's coming back, so back into the game. Gary Latin will probably come on uh, full forward for Nicky Lambert. He would have more skill than Lambert, I'd say. And G.G. Ryan is clearing a lot of ball at the moment. I'd say that's what's going to happen. Well, substitutions about to be made. We'll just wait and see how they all develop. Damien Fitzhenry down towards Paul Codd just getting in behind Kieran Carey trying to link up with Fenlon one-handed forward there by Paul O'Grady comes back to Liam Dunn huge one in dropping in there and dropping over the bar <laughs> Liam Dunn his first point of the match here Nano made his debut against Leash 13 years ago well, this was a, a point to really lift and inspire his colleagues and the many thousands of fans here. Great score. A very fine attendance, as we told you just before half-time. Nearly 37,000 people at Croke Park this afternoon. That's forward there by Ken Furlong. Larry Murphy picking it up. Nicky Furlong was available. Comes back instead to Paul Codd. Trying to shot himself, looking for the score, but not getting it. Todd has now drifted out more and more towards the middle of the field, being followed by Damien Reel. Wexford can tack, tack on a point or two, Jerry, kind of ease the pressure on them, but like, they're putting a few wide. Two points between the teams. Limerick trying to come back. A lot of tension about. So much at stake. Well, an excellent quarter-final time. So they wait inside. That's Owen O'Neill, of course, from Moru Bohor. He's in the top of the right right now. Mark Foley snapping this one in. Kieran Carey in to pick up the loose ball. Dashing forward. Familiar style, great accuracy. He's got a point, and it's his first of the day. And Limerick now are two goals and nine points. Wexford's three goals and seven. This was Carey, full flight as usual. He revels in the freedom out around midfield. And Gary Laffin is on. Darren Stamp is the one who's made way. <laughs> Laffin gone in there on Clem Smith. He's at top of the right. It comes down here towards Trevor Kelly. Left behind, Larry Murphy. Lobbed in, it's got accuracy, and it gets over the crossbar. One Wexford needed. Great score indeed by Larry Murphy. Nobody getting close enough to him, given a bit of space by Brian Geary. Wexford Gerald just holding that two-point gap the whole time. And here's Larry O'Gorman. Rory McCarthy working hard. Challenge over there by Mark Foley. Runs it to Kieran Carey, having a great match. Carey advancing once again with purpose. And he is dragged back, and it's a free-in to Limerick. This to close the gap. If Paul O'Grady can point this free here, and he's well capable, Wexford's lead will be down to the minimum. Yeah, Jerry's confidence back after the last 65, he should tap it over. 
Just slightly to the left of the posts. And again he gets it. Playing much more confidently now. And that is five points in all. Wexford have a one-point lead. Still plenty of time remaining. Larry Murphy once again contesting with Brian Geary. Mitch Jordan is in to help. Steve McDonough facing back towards his own goal. Chased the whole time by Nicky Lambert. Gets the clearance out towards midfield. That's Damien Real diagonally across. Missed by Barry Foley, I think deliberately, hoping to steal a march there on David O'Connor. Didn't work out. Instead, it is Ken Furlong for Wexford. Brian Geary coming out. Good clearance. Good lengthy ball. Missed by O'Connor this time. Swept inside here. Here's Odonio. Sean O'Connor is calling for him. He gives it to him. He's disallowing it. It's unbelievable, Ger. But that's the rule in Holland. There's, there's no actually advantage rule. The whistle is blown, you give the free. It's a rule that's wrong, really. It should be changed. It's going to cost Limerick a goal. The Limerick fans are furious. You could see this great run here by Sean O'Connor. The move by Owen O'Neill. But the goal ruled out. And to be careful, Liam Dunn is already on the yellow and he's had to throw in the hurl there. Ref said nothing. Referee Michael Wadding is going way down the field. And I think there's a blood yeah. rule here where Adrian Fenlon is going to have to go off and be replaced, at least momentarily. He's also going to change his jersey. So a change made just for a moment at least. Free. Paul O'Grady taking it, and again he puts it over the bar. They may have been denied a goal, and the Limerick crowd just down in front of me furious, but the teams are level. Second time they've been level in this match. Still there to play for. The issue wide open. Kieran Carey, lovely deft work across to Jack Foley. They set up another attack. Owen O'Neill just manages to get it up. He's fouled, I think, there by Rory Malambra. Referee says play away this time. It comes forward here to Paul O'Grady. Challenged by Trevor Kelly. Inside towards Brian Dudley. Darrell Ryan is there, but they're back in again with a scoring opportunity. Only Moore just went away from goal slightly and is put in wide. The chance was just there for a split second, but he went too far to the right, and the chance was gone. Oh, it's an intense clash. Yeah, it's great. In the semi-final. It's, it's great, Gerard. It's great. There's tension and there's pressure all over the place, and the referee isn't too sure where he's at. One minute he lets a free go, next minute he waves, it blows. You know, so it's anyone's game. Adrian Fenland back into the action. Orlin checking his stride there. Ken Furlong getting it away. Here's Kieran Carey. Great play. Lobbed in there by Barry Foley, who's come deep towards Brian Begley and Dara Ryan as well. Just getting a right stick to it here with his right hand. And right good play. He's having a stormer. Mark Foley leaving that one go out over the sideline. <laughs> They're going to take it quickly. Succeed in doing so. Clem Smith and the referee whistling back the linesman on the far side i think wasn't uh, happy taken again at the moment Ger darren ryan is having the better of brian begley but one mistake begley still a strong man one mistake in there and it's crucial and you look at the time there right now and wexford only two points in this second half so far and 20 minutes are gone that'll be worrying for uh, 
Tony Dempsey and his fellow selectors. Here's Sean O'Connor, known as Shawnee. And he has missed the opportunity. Didn't play well, by all accounts, in a recent under-21 match. That is now 14 wides for Limerick. about the way the game is developing at this stage. Damien Fitenry's puck out towards Paul Codd, lets it drop down. Tries to go in and make amends. Larry O'Gorman trying to advance, partly stopped there by Mark Foley. Jack Foley. Good ball towards Owen O'Neill. Beautifully caught here by Rory Mallon. Mitch Jordan was trying to get it, but it's Mark Foley. He's having another brilliant game at left half-back. And Kieran Kelly. They all run after him. In particular, Trevor Kelly. Kelly tried to deny him. Into his space here. Sean O'Connor. Liam Dunn trying to close down the options. Firing it in towards Brian Begley. Let's it run on behind him. Owen O'Neill is chasing. And so too is Dara Ryan. Ryan the fullback. Like an old style fullback, tall, strong, very, very positive in his approach. Wexford get it again. Cod, shouldered by McDonough, onto his left hand side and he's put it wide. He can't believe his luck. Had a hard battle there from Stephen McDonough, good old hard shoulder charge. McDonough is all fired up at the moment. We're seeing a lot of wonderful skills. Every. The winded, I'm sure, and he missed it badly. Rory McCarthy has it back for Wexford. Teams, remember, still very tight here. Mitch Jordan has got the accuracy right this time. In fact, it is Latham who's got it. Gary Latham. That's his first point since coming on as a sub. And Wexford have a one-point lead. Key stage in the match. Laffan taking it with style and putting it over. Nicky Lambert is down injured. And indications that he may well have to go off. Stephen Bow once again in. Lambert with a point in the match so far. So a push there alongside Davy Morris. And they want to bring in a fresh man, but uh, he wants to stay on, I'm sure. Strongly built lad. Timmy Hoolan with this puck out towards Ollie Morton. Furlong keeping an eye on him. They try to work it out here. Good shoulder again. Rory McCarthy knocking it down towards Gary Lappin. Chased by Clem Smith. Ball into the corner towards Mitch Jordan. Two players playing in the corner with yellow helmets here for the team known, of course, down the years as the Yellow Bellies. And that's a very good block there. And it'll end up with Limerick have to start once again with a puck out. Nicky Lambert is about to uh, make way. And Jer Coleman is the one who's coming in. And he's another one of the under-21s. So a lot of under-21 players getting great experience here in this championship. And uh, they will have enjoyed their day. They'll enjoy it more if they can hang on for a victory. That's true, Jerry. You have to say that Tom Dimsey, the under-21s come on, has kind of revitalised Webster as such. They will probably put uh, Gary Laffin in full forward, now he's more at home in the, in the middle than out in the corner. And the move there is to get Rory McCarthy out of the middle of the field and up into the corner where he can be dangerous, although he's done a lot of very hard work. Trying to pick this one up here and succeeding is Paul Codd. About 11 minutes of normal time still to play, and that's danger down there for Limerick. This is Rory McCarthy, just switched into top of the right, needing a bit of assistance, players looking for it. Gary Lappin having a whip on it, and he's whipped it outside, and he's whipped it wide. Jer Coleman wasn't too far away as well. The chance 
gone. Well, Limerick wanted to take a very quick puck out because Timmy Houlihan had recognised that Mark Foley was unmarked. But this is what happened just moments earlier. It breaks back down again towards Sean O'Grady. Or Sean O'Connor, I should say. Anymore and trying to keep it in play. No joy. And it's going to be a Wexford sideline ball. Yeah, Jones, the afternoon. Jason's young Ken Furlong come on as well. He's playing with Ken right wing back. He's picking up a lot of ball. Lovely little nifty hurler. Edwin Fenlon coming back to take this one. Everybody glad to have a little bit of a breather. He wants to retake it. Nice cut. Getting good elevation. Mark Foley going to meet it. Linking up with Kieran Carey. The shoulder coming in for Paul Cobb. Back it goes to Mark Foley once again. Players playing as if their very lives and futures depend on a victory here. It's a free to Limerick. So 18 points to 17, the position right now in points as Foley strikes it high. With accuracy, he puts it over the bar. It's a great score, John. He's out a good 70 yards there, but he struck it well. The teams are level once again. The third time they've been level. What odds now we could have a draw? Long way to go still. I make it about eight minutes of normal playing time. And with all these substitutions and so on, the referee will probably add on another two to three minutes. Brian Geary stumbling. Most inappropriate time, but assisted there by Ali Moran. They work it up, a hurley goes flying. Sean O'Connor appeals to the referee. Limerick have the free in. And Paul O'Grady will come to take it, I'm sure. Well, Sean O'Connor is playing very well when he came off, or since he came on, like, you know, played very well in the Munster final. Well, he was their, their top scorer, a goal and three points. Not too much better than that. So here's Paul O'Grady from Patrick Swell. Great hurling area. Again, he's taking his time about it. Maximum concentration, low trajectory, and it bounces around dangerously. Almost stopped there in the turf. And another pile-up of bodies inside here, and the referee is signalling there's going to be a free, and it'll be a free in for Limerick. Yeah, well, Jerry, if it is or not, I don't know at the moment, but like, they're going to have to have a rule with this in Congress, because every ball has been lying down, or people are lying on top of it, and they you are know, getting away with it. Referee seemed to indicate that it was going to be a free in, and it yeah, is. But well, that's the first thing, Jaron, between the two monster games of the half this year and the two quarterfinals. That's the first time that there's a free come out of that. Well, you could see the very awkward bounce of the ball. It was close to the end line and bounced back into the playing surface. This is an easy one for Paul O'Grady. It should be his seventh. minutes of playing time left, Eamon Cregan pouncing around the place there, up and down the field. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Tremendous excitement. Wexford trying to win their puck out here. Kieran Carey touches it down. Larry Murphy trying to take it for Wexford. Wexford trying to draw a level. Murphy's strike is good. It's over the ball. What a contest this is. Oof. Tony Dempsey feeling the pressure, I'm sure. Who'd Both want side have drawn level. Who'd want to be a manager, Ger? Both Tony and, and, and Eamon Cregan, they're all feeling it down, they're all running around the field. Very little they can do outside the white line, it all happens inside it. That's where it's happening, and it's a thriller at Croke Park. Brian Begley has come way out up to 40. One-handed away by Larry O'Gorman. 
Mark Foley trying to get it forward for Limerick. Mitch Jordan helped and assisted there by Ken Furlong. In the corner, it's Clem Smith, challenged by Rory McCarthy. Belted away first time by TJ Ryan. And there was a good call there at the back by David O'Connor, but they failed to get it out decisively. Opportunity still to roll it up onto the stick. Here's Moran. Back to Kieran Carey, so cool, so assured. Such a great bit of vision here to pick out the unmarked Paul O'Grady. And that's over the ball. The Limerick Dogs are crying. They're out of their seats with sheer joy. But there's still four and a half minutes of playing time left. O'Grady has got eight points out of that tally for Limerick. Limerick by one. Kieran Carey was the architect of this score brilliantly driven over the bar Carey once again the man invited back onto the panel the man who came back with great effect they come forward once again here that's Jack Foley and Jack Foley has put it into the goalkeeper's hands again a little stumble there by Damien Fitzhenry fouled by Sean O'Connor free out to Wexford position around the middle of the field now Ger is vital This is a free to Wexford. This was that uh, stop there just a moment, a little stumble, and then the foul by Sean O'Connor. Pressure once again here on the Wexford half box. Good block down here by Moran, getting that ball away from Ken Furlong. And that one has gone wide. Every last remaining chance, they'll have to try and avail of it. Everyone's on the edge. The one. All on the edge of their seats, Ger. Beautiful puck out. Well, well taken by Adrian Fenlon, steadying himself. Players must be very tired. That's a huge one downfield. It goes left in the wide so far for Wexford. That is wide number 10. Whereas Limerick have been uh, very wasteful. 15 wides in all. Tony Dempsey's out there, wants to make a point. The two teams have served up a thriller. Full credit to all concerned. Jimmy Houlihan, down towards Begley, now operating on the 40, as I say. Here's Kieran Carey, advancing. He's done it many times in the past, but this one has gone wide. Well, Jerry was trying to get over onto his favourite left side there. If he could have got it there. Some of the homework has been done by the two teams. They know the strong points of the opposing players. Larry O'Gorman here, firing it down to a totally unmarked Wexford. Larry Murphy, and Larry Murphy has put it wide. He had a chance, there was space. It's one Wexford needed. Wexford only four scores, you know, in the second half. Two extra minutes will be played. So, we have four minutes to go. Well, lots of candidates, I think, for man of the match. We'll work that one out later on right now. Let's see. Who's going to take the victory and a place in the semi-finals of the Guinness Championship? Brian Begley coming forward, shortening the grip on the stick and putting it over the bar. Big Begley does it for Limerick. It's a second point. They have a two-point lead. All kinds of permutations when we know the winner here as to who will be playing whom in the semi-finals. But there's a lot of work to be done yet. But that was a vital point. Now it's up to Exford. They've played so well in this match. Great piece of play there by Paul Codd. Just denying Sean O'Connor. Are Limerick to go home happy? They're about to make another change. And coming on for them will be Stephen Lucy. Or rather it's Owen Foley who's coming on. Foley from Patrick's well. Limerick going into 36 scoring chances to 29 for Wexford. And they're not finished yet. Furlongs, long clearance. Snapped here and snapped up well by TJ Ryan. Great fullback play. Oh, mention of great fullback play. What about the style of Darrow Ryan here once again? Two great number threes in action. This one runs on. Rory McCarthy trying to run in. He's dragged down. It has to be a free in. He was outside the large rectangle. 
it's uh, a free to Wexford. Still enough time. Two points between the teams. This was the run here of McCarthy. Hauled down, however, by Clem Smith. The ten is coming up. Yep, here he comes. So we know what they're going to do. It's a tall order though, Ger, because like he's doing it twice and they're going to lie in the goals this time. They'll be all in this time. If he can do this, he'll hit it as hard as he can. Foley is booked. This is uh, just it's 20 metres out or thereabouts, give or take a metre. Big moment now for Damien Fitzhenry. A goal from a penalty after 31 minutes. And now here we are, 70 minutes and a little overplayed. There'll be another minute and a bit to go. They seem to have taken the approach that a point is no good. Right. McDonough shaping up there. If he scores, Jerry, he'll be the hero. And if he doesn't score, they say they should have taken the point. So, a dramatic moment. And Limerick have made another change as Ollie Moran has gone off and the player who's come on is Owen Foley. But now all eyes on this man here, Damien Fitzhenry. Under a minute to play. His team behind, he strikes and he gets it! A second penalty goal for Wexford. What a finish. What a shot. A little variation on the other one. But the same blistering pace on the shot beating Mark Foley and the rest of the defence Wexford are delighted they lead by one Limerick attack time almost up back it comes O'Grady black down they'll be wondering how much time the referee is going to add on that's out there by Ger Coleman here's Timmy Hulan. oh he's lost it Wexford have a chance once again and the referee are signalling I think that there's very little left in it now still Wexford attacking into Fenlon they chase after him Jack Foley gets back goal side McDonough we've played over two minutes now but it's at the referee's discretion if there are delays during the added time Cod getting it back ferocious battle down to Ryan once again it's TJ Ryan our Limerick once again to leave Croke Park beaten by a Wexford team in the championship still a few seconds to play the referee determines they try to work it in Wexford have to, dis have to be disciplined and they are and away comes Larry O'Gorman kicked into space anywhere will do and he's looking at the referee just a point in it but Wexford have the lead how much more time to play very little Ger TJ Ryan coming up it's 22 to 21 in points. And a delaying tactic here in a way because uh, there'll be another few seconds wasted as a substitution is made. Flair has gone off, uh, I think is Mitch Jordan and it's Barry Goff who's come in here. Is there one last attack for Limerick? He's furious, he wants to take it quickly. Referee says, take it easy. They're waiting for Mitch Jordan to go off. That's the reason. He's making his way off. No particular rush. Referee still looking at his watch. Nearly four minutes of injury time has been played or added time. Is there one last attack for Limerick? It's out over the sideline. It's a Wexford ball. One of the great championship matches at Croke Park this year. Wexford still holding on. Adrian Fenelon wanting to take it. He's usually very good at these here. I expect a long one here from Adrian Fenelon. It is a huge one. And the referee's whistle sound. It's all over. And Wexford have won as dramatic a game in the championship as you could witness. Pat Murphy there, one of the officials in to celebrate with Tony Dempsey and all the others in the back room. Tony Dempsey, it's his day. Limerick are absolutely devastated.
they were leading by two points time was almost up but Damien Fitzhenry struck a second free and scored a second goal and Wexford have won by the slimmest of margins it's a bittersweet day for Raymond Cregan and it's Wexford versus Tipperary in the semi-final Galway will be playing Kilkenny but you have to pay great great credit to players on both teams it's been one of those marvellous matches I hope you've enjoyed it you certainly will have if you're a Wexford fan they've won by 4-10 to Limerick's 2-15 it's a shame there had to be a loser I have to say yeah a draw would have been a fair result and the Limerick supports will probably feel very hard done by with that goal that was just that was got a free but that one that was disallowed okay well let's get some reaction immediately let's go down to the sideline and to Dara Maloney Larry that was unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable you couldn't you couldn't write a storybook ending like that like Damien came in at half time and he was he was so disappointed about getting hooped for the for the second goal in Limerick off. and do you know to come up take a penalty straight away after that and then come up with that 21 yard free and he only buried it do you know I feel sorry for Limerick do you know they were an up and coming team they were a great young team I know they'll be back next year but we needed this win in the worst possible way a lot of people questioned our pride our blood and I think we silenced a few critics today uh, we didn't do ourselves justice we know against Kilkenny in the semi-final or in the Leinster final we only played for the first half and Kilkenny was in the second half these things happen but we knew coming up here that we could we could we could do it you know we believed in ourselves we knew that a lot of us are on the wrong side of the late 20s or the 30s but I tell you today the likes of Rowan McCarthy showed that he's not finished hurling yet or Larry Gorman there's a lot of hurling left in this team it looked like it had slipped away from you there at the end until yeah. Damien's free it, it, it seemed it seemed it seemed every uh, each each of the two counties seemed to hit a purple patch we missed a few easy ones I missed two easy shots in the start of the first half and to be honest with you at this level you have to be getting getting these chances you have to be taking them like we didn't take them against McKenney and we were at the wrong side of a 13 point defeat today we won we probably snatched it in the end you know like Eamon Creek has done a superb job with this team and I know they'll be back like they're under 20 the vast majority of that team are under 21 and whereas the vast majority of our team are over 25 or 6 you know so that's the way it goes but I can't, I can't believe we're training for an Ireland semi-finals in two weeks time well you are well done oh, thanks, thanks Larry cheers, cheers. Yes, Larry Murphy there, very generous in his tribute of uh, the opposition today. Wonderful opposition provided by Limerick. What a day for uh, Wexford. It's Wexford versus Tipperary. That match will be played in the semi-final of the Guinness Championship on August the 12th. And the other semi-final, as we said earlier, it's Kilkenny against Galway. If they're anything like this, it will be well worth coming to see. Let's go back down to Dara one more time. Larry O'Gorman, that must feel very special. Absolutely, the proudest moment I tell you this year so far. People had written us off so much and said, oh, Wexford Hurlem is dead. But I think today we proved it, that there's life and there's heart and there's good still in us. And I'm so proud of all the players. We worked so hard and so many people knocked us. But we went out there today and we fought with heart and soul. And by God, did we try and try and try. We were then buried for times and we came and picked ourselves back up again. And we fought all the way to the end and that's what it was all about. And thank God we've done it today and hopefully now we look forward to meeting Tipperary. What about Damien? Uh, the, the two goals he was involved in, a mistake cost you a goal. He came up straight after, put one in from the penalty, and that at the end, amazing. Absolutely. We always believed Damien is, is a crack shot at goal, so we had no faith, no, no harm, in, and trying Damien up front and uh, taking penalties. And even in training, there's no one withstanding the goal down in training, so I don't know how people are going to stop it. They may, may use some bigger or something to stop Damien because he's a terrific strike on the ball. And today, when we needed a goal, he really lifted us with them two powerful shots. And thank God it really got us back on the road again. And we'll take it from here. Like, we go back to training during the week now and look forward to the Tipperary game. How hurt were the members of this team after the comments after the Leinster final? A lot by your own people as well. People were very disappointed. Oh, yeah. Like, you I mean, even back home in our own street or our own local pubs or whatever, people was really knocking us down to the floor. Like, but we knew we had it. We knew we had heart and guts because we didn't train for the last nine months for nothing. And we knew we had it in the tank. And it was all about getting it right on the day with the attitude right and whatever and thank god we got a right today and hopefully we can get focused in the next big game sure you will well done larry thank Thanks you very much yeah, Dara Maloney reporting there at Croke Park. Well, that was a stirring game of hurling and fantastic to see Wexford coming through, particularly after that Leinster final defeat. Michael uh, Dignan, I'm sure you enjoyed that. I did, I have to say, really, really enjoyable game. Um, you have to feel sorry for Limerick. You know, they've had their share of heartaches over the last few years. Late goals against Offaly in 94, could have won the 96 I learned, and then this again today, it's very hard to stomach. Yeah. But having said that, Wexford have had their share, and I think back to 98 when we won the All-Ireland, 
Johnny Dooley got a goal in the very last second of the game for us to win, and we went on and won the All Ireland. And Wexford were devastated over that. They outplayed, you know, they were a better team that day, yeah. but we won. And you know, it's probably fitting that they've had a f Kilkenny have snatched wins over them over the last ten years as well, where, where Wexford looked at one. So maybe they got their reward today. But what a game! Outstanding displays right throughout both teams. The hard commitment from both teams was outstanding. Like Dara Ryan and TJ Ryan, the two fullbacks. To me, were outstanding. Sure. Kieran Carey in the second half for Limerick, and the two cornerbacks for Wexford. Okay, Barry Foley got two goals, but David O'Connor had an outstanding game. So, like all over, brilliant game, brilliant performances, and great heart by Wexford. We thought Wexford, that Limerick, I should say, Pete Finnerty, would come with the storming finish, and that they might just pull this one off. And indeed, they got a couple of points at the end that we're going to have a look at that seemed to suggest this is what was going to happen. Yeah, they seemed to be on top in the middle of the field, especially towards the end. Kieran Carey had, was lord in it at, at midfield, and uh, Wexford could do nothing with him. Uh, but the game hung in the balance for a long time, and Limerick had a lot of possession, but really didn't put it to good use. Yeah. It was a bit similar again to, to the Munster final. There we see Paul O'Grady, and in fairness to him now, he had a torrid first half, but he stuck in there, and this was the point to put uh, Limerick into the lead. Uh, I think it was for the second time, but it was a great score by him. But we didn't see enough of it. Here we see Begley, and I thought when, he, when this ball went over that that was it. This was the point that would win it. But um, we didn't know what was to come after this. But Limerick hadn't enough people fired on all cylinders. And you can put it down to some magnificent defending by, by yeah. Wexford. They, they blocked everything. They harried um, David O'Connor in the co cornerback. Yeah. He, he closed up Barry Foley in the second half, and he didn't give him a sniff. Foley had scored two goals in, in the first half. Yes. But a fantastic performance by, by Wexford. You know, we all had written them off and said they wouldn't do it. But beforehand, Tony Dempsey said, if you got the best out of this team, they'd win. And they took a lot of resolve yeah. out of the beaten that Offaly got last year. They got a similar beaten this year in, in a Leinster final. And they came back and they've proved that they're still hurling left in, in Leinster. Well, there sure is. That's no doubt about that. Let's have a look at the statistics uh, then from that match and see what they tell us at the end. <laughs> The unsuccessful goalkeeper here with me, Damien. This is your RTE man of the match. Congratulations to you. Sir. What a match! Yeah, uh, turned out to be a nice one for us. Start didn't start off great for me. Uh, got hooked there and let in a relatively soft goal for the second one, but came back and we got a, a penalty and stuck that one away. And luckily enough, got the last one to, to finish off the game. What's your technique where penalties are concerned? <laughs> There's no real technique. Only try and get it in the back of the net. You must have felt enormous pressure coming up to hit that second one. Yeah, well, you know, I knew that uh, there was only a few minutes left. The lads were telling me on the way down that we had to score it, you know, and, and it's just hidden hope then when you get down that far. Sure. Congratulations and well done. Thanks very much. When you get down that far, you might as well put it in the net, isn't that right? Okay, right here on the...